Sir, the Terran delegation has arrived. I straightened up from my desk, irritated. It's about time. For the past galactic week, we have been refitting the entirety of the station for their arrival. Reinforcing deck plates and increasing humidity and adding entire pools. Pools of water for their convenience. It's the same offer we make every new species, of course, but it felt as if the Terrans were taking advantage of our generosity and making a list of demands that was ridiculous in its breadth of requirements. Even their requested diet supply were to the extreme, everything from branches and leaves to raw fish. I prided myself on Yarvin Station. We were centred across a dozen different Empire shipping lanes and in prime position for being an island of diplomacy and treaties. The very best the galaxy could offer could be found here. And if not here, then on Yarvim itself, a planet we have dedicated to this purpose for centuries. That the Terrans have chosen my station as the location for their admittance into the Galactic Council, and the necessary signing of countless treaties is only fitting, but their needs have been endless. Now that they have arrived, I could breathe a little easier, and begin making plans for a nice evening in the hot bays getting my scales sanded. But first, the polite greetings. As I stepped out of my office and made my way down the vast halls and corridors, I could see the final touches being put on our endless preparations. What did the Terrans have for so many little perches and platforms? Why would they want such wide open walkways uncluttered of even one thing under claw, but insist on those same little perches? Who knew the mind of the Terrans? That was the job of the true diplomats. The lighting they preferred at least showed the station off at its best. The golden white light lending a little shine to every service I frankly approved of. Maybe I keep it afterward, and reserve the standard red lights for evening and night only. Most species prefer the usual docking base for their arrivals, but the Terrans had insisted on making use of the cargo bays. There had been extensive reworks to make that presentable. Delegates don't generally stroll through the very bowels of a facility, but we could only assume that the Terrans were unusually large. You'd think they'd have sent some hollows of what to expect of the Terrans, but when I'd made a request of that effect, their Wolfer and allies just laughed, drove two of their six hands through her crest and told me, there's no preparing for Terrans. Well, we'll see about that. All we've been doing of late is preparing for Terrans. The ship struck me as unremarkable, a standard rotating gravity vessel about a kilometre long, bearing the blue planet sigil of their government. As it docked, its main base sealed with our own, and the towering door slid open, admitting a small black and white avian. It fluttered onto the deck. I could easily see it wore a fair bit of technology across its tiny eyes and small soldiers, and scrapped to his chest. A servitor species, perhaps. A drone. I and my contingent of greeters looked on with interest. Clearly it was no pet. The avian fluttered up his feathers, and as if to prove me right in my assumption it was no beast, spread its wings and bowed, speaking in a high, warbling voice, its little machines probably translated into galactic common. To the commander of Yerevan Station. I winced, it was a good try. And gathered allies. I am Poe, envoy of the Corvia, and I will be your translator for the duration of our stay. I greet you in the name of the Terran Assemblage. If you bear with us a moment, we're, uh, having a bit of trouble with... The deck plate shuddered with a bellow from inside the airlock, and the avian lifted off the ground in a flutter of wings and an untranslatable squawk of what seemed to be anger, flashing back inside the ship in a whirl of black and white and green sheen. I exchanged looks with my lieutenant, raising my crest slightly in unspoken query. He made a small negative gesture, equally confused. And then the Terran delegation arrived. Each step made the cargo bay floors quiver as the first emerged, a towering massive wall of quadrupedal grey flesh and ornate colourful clothing jewels and beads. Some of it looked like it might be tech strapped across its broad grey head. The Terran towered over even me, as one solitary manipulating limb questing in the air before it, and for all its size it walked remarkably quietly, adjusting its tread to still the sound on our floor, stepping aside and out of the way of the next that followed. And it was a completely different species. Small, visibly aquatic, but nearly the same grey, with a long grinning snout full of sharp peg-like teeth and a bulbous head using what seemed to be anti-grav repulsors to swim through the air. A network could choose and mesh providing constant moisture. Ah, the pools. It chattered rapid fire at his towering companion, the translators only catching snatches of words here and there, but the overall impression seemed to be excitement. A third, but also aquatic, but much, much bigger, black and white, but outfitted with similar anti-grav tech, wrapped in colourful mesh like the small grey aquatic but instead covered in a sheen that suggested to me some sort of lotion or oil, taking the space to the side to watch us all in silence with almost invisible dark eyes. It exuded an aura of predator, making a few of my crew shift uneasily. 
Four others followed in rapid succession, looking vaguely similar in an outline of two legs, two arms, and a solitary head. Primates all, but differing vastly in size and colour and fur. The biggest, a uh, black furred creature as tall as I was. The smallest, similarly dark furred. One of the average size, vividly copper furred. The last, utterly hairless, save a tuft of yellow on the very top of his head. Each wore clothing that suggested a uniform, but different for each. The avian returned only then, fluttering to a stop once more on the floor. And I was forced to consider for the first time that the Terran delegation was multiple species, not just one. Unheard of. The rise of intelligence in a world demanded all rivals be extinguished. There was no way that Terrans could have seven different intelligent species. Eight? All disbelieving eyes were on the avian who bowed again, a gesture the other new arrivals mirrored in their own ways. Allow me to introduce the honourable representatives of the Terran Assemblance. Hurun Kao of the Afante Peoples, Kit and Riri Dussin of the Transoceanic Alliance, and Garouf Rohu, who walks in alleys. Sarah Winstone and Brian Hurst of the Homogony. We are all grateful for the immense work and effort that you must have put yourselves through for us. 